You are about to listen to a new episode of Simply Existing, the podcast nobody asked for. Today's episode includes topics such as uncontrollable spending habits, weird dreams about movies that haven't come out yet, and more about all time fucking low. I mean seriously, doesn't this guy get enough of that band? Anyway, Simply Existing is not responsible for any impulse purchases or a newfound and weird obsession with a pop-punk band as a result of listening to this episode. With that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Play that intro, bitch. I'm not sure what fellow podcasters do to get pumped for, you know, recording an episode, but because obviously like my intro is like edited in after the fact, but I had to play that shit back just now to get pumped. It's like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm, I'm prepared today, guys, but um, I played the extended version, the version that you hear on, you know, Spotify and shit. That's like my basic little 10 second one, but the extended one is like an, uh, like a minute long. It's like a minute long and it's nothing crazy I don't think I mean I personally I think it's pretty good for someone who's never like used GarageBand to like make songs or anything like that but yeah I just listened to it for the first time in a while the extended one and it's got it got me pumped it got me pumped I almost used that version for at least like the outro but then I decided to keep it short let's do the little 10 second one intro and outro I know most po- most podcasts I watch, they don't have like a really super crazy long intro track. But um, except like fucking Joe Rogan has like a crazy long, well, he has a crazy long podcast in general, but his intro, it's just like, you forget you're starting a podcast sometimes. And then the outro is like crazy long, but he can do that. He's, uh, I guess you could say he's grandfathered in, but We'll keep it short and sweet for this little small podcast. Hope you guys are doing good out there. It's been... What's, what's today's date? It's July 27th. If which if you're hearing this, um, you'll probably hear this next week at some point. Episode 3 has not dropped. But if I'm counting the days correctly, it's been about one week since I sat and recorded an episode. So usually I try to have these... Um, I'll work on like multiple episodes during the week or at least you know for the for the amount of you know podcasts that are out right now the amount of episodes that are out um i'm trying to stay ahead of the curve you know i'm only three in this is the fourth but i worked on the second one and the third one within the same week recorded and edited and you know scheduled them to be put out so if i could keep doing that that's gonna be happy fun times somebody like my tweet Is it the Alex Gosgarf tweet? Yep. Liked your tweet. Alex Gosgarf is about to break the internet with these overalls. And you know what? Yeah, he is. Because holy shit, he's rocking those overalls. It makes me want to go and buy overalls now. I think I could pull them off. Maybe. Maybe not. Not as well as he can. Holy shit, people. Like, if you don't know who Alex Gosgarf is of the band All Time Low, go check him out in his overalls. He said, we're bringing back concerts with overalls. He's like, forget the skinny jeans and the, you know, tank tops. I'm wearing fucking overalls. But yeah, they had their first show. All Time Low had their first show last night. Their first real concert since the pandemic started. And it looked like a fun time. They played some new songs. They played an even newer song that hasn't even been released yet. It's called Postmodern Anxiety, and it comes out this Friday the 30th, but um, yeah, this looks like a pre-COVID concert, and it's I know, like, just following them on their journey, just over the years in general and during this odd year and a half, it's like they've been trying the best they can to maintain any normalcy and keep the fan base, you know, afloat in a way, I guess you could say. They did their Basement Noise concert series back in the fall. They did some small acoustic performances online during the pandemic. 
And just last month, I think they... Was it last month? Yeah. Sometime last month, they played this uh, charity event. And they did like a small acoustic set. But this, this was full band, full production. And it was so nice to see. I miss seeing all-time low concert footage on my timeline on Twitter. And it's just getting me pumped for the shows I'm seeing them at next month in August and, you know, going into September. So, Sad Summer Fest, that's going to be a fun one. I'm, I'm so excited for Sad Summer. I've already got plans for the Sad Summer recap episode of Simply Existing. Uh, me and my buddy Nick are going to... We're going to the Sad Summer um, show. It's an all-time low headliner. I've mentioned this on the podcast a bunch. That's going to be in Harrisburg next month. And then that's kind of like a little little introduction, little get your feet wet in the pool before you dive in. And so this is like we're getting our feet wet in Harrisburg before we go to Sad Summer in New York City and in Asbury Park, New Jersey. But I've already contacted him like, hey, want to make this your first guest appearance on the podcast? And he's stoked. I'm stoked. I just got to plan around um, the other episodes of the podcast, my schedule for that week, those weeks. I might not post an episode, upload an episode on one of those weeks. I don't know. Just as a little break, too, because, you know, I'm going to be tired and all that shit from going to these things. But I plan on releasing that episode not too long after the actual shows. So we'll see what happens. But I mean, I guess it's not too far-fetched to be planning this far in advance, considering I was already thinking about the Halloween episodes of this show. I think I specified one episode, but I want to do something very Halloween-y for each week in October. It could be like movie reviews or just like um, have somebody on. I plan on having people on for those. We just talk like our favorite scary movies and stuff like that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. We're still... Well, we're in August next week. And that's just gonna fly by. But gotta plan ahead. That's one of the things about my personality. is just like, I can't like, stop and relax. I gotta like think ahead about everything. And now with the podcast, this is like the one thing I actually need to kind of keep on top of. So... That's what I'm keeping on top of. I'm off from school until the end of next month. And I'm not even going back to campus. I'm still doing online next semester. So I'm not really expecting too much trouble or hassle keeping up with school work and the podcast. If anything, the podcast, like, um, I have the weekends to do. Outside of, like, occasional concerts, it's not like I have any real plans like I used to. I just kind of, I've been chilling, just hanging out. I'm like, thank God I started doing this because, like, I needed something to do. So, this has been fun. I've enjoyed doing these episodes. I was feeling bad about not starting sooner, like, you know, during the pandemic with, along with everybody else. But, honestly, I'm just glad I got started, period. You know, like I said, I'm not going to get into the whole story because, you know, you can listen to episode one for that. But I'm glad that, um, you know, I just got, I'm getting better. I feel like I'm getting better as I've gone along. This is only the fourth one. By the time, like... The 20th one comes. I hope I've learned a bunch of new stuff. Okay, so we need to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home and just kind of the MCU in general. So I had a dream the other night about Spider-Man No Way Home. And in it, let me just say, Tom Holland was not in my dream at all. However, Tobey Maguire was in the movie. And it was weird how the dream kind of like set itself because I was watching the movie and I was watching everybody react to Tobey Maguire come on screen. And but then it would like pan into the movie. Like, you know, you, you know what I mean? It's like uh, I would dream like I was in the movie at that point. And it would go back and forth between me being in the theater and like me experiencing the movie like I'm in the movie as like a bystander. Also in the dream was Topher Grace's Venom. 
And I was like, what the actual fuck am I dreaming of? You know, once I woke up, I was like, what the fuck was that? And so I can't tell, I can't explain details because it was, it was just like, uh, cause like dreams in general, they're just kind of like pieces and pieces and pieces. And like, there's very seldomly, can I ever piece a dream together until you start to finish detail after detail? Like, you know, it's never linear, but yeah, I just saw Toe for Grace's Venom kind of lunging at Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, but probably the most interesting um, inclusion of characters in this uh, Spider-Man No Way Home dream version, the dream version of Spider-Man No Way Home, rather, was the inclusion of different Iron Men from, you know, different timelines and such. They were like variants of Tony Stark, but you never see Tony Stark's face. It was just uh, Iron Man suits flying around attacking Spider-Man. For what reason? I don't know. I can't explain the motives of the characters produced by my subconscious but my point is and the reason i bring up this dream is just the fact that i'm fucking dreaming about it it's like there's so much hype and anticipation surrounding spider-man no way home and it's such a highly speculated topic there's such highly speculative discourse within the mcu in general especially at this phase but this movie Holy fucking shit. I just see endless um, tweets and posts on social media about when the trailer is coming out. And here we are, it's July. This movie comes out at, you know, I think like the end of December. Sometime in December. And we haven't even gotten a teaser or anything. Like, I would be happy with at least a teaser. But whatever this movie is going to be, it's clearly being very there's its secrets are being closely kept and whatever they have told us which they've told us things along the lines of um, alfred molina uh jamie fox reprising their roles as dr octopus and uh electro stuff like that and even i think i don't know if it's confirmed willem dafoe is returning what people can speculate is that there is indeed a multiverse and if you've watched loki you already know how they've set the tone for what we can expect for the remainder of this phase and, you know, the future of these upcoming Marvel films. But what I find just so crazy, what's so crazy to me is just the impact of Marvel and its shows and its films and the impact just being so strong to enable such highly speculative discourse among the fans. I think the perfect example of that is just WandaVision. If you watched WandaVision live, like as it was airing every week, then you know or have experienced in some way, shape, or form the crazy and just, I don't want to say outlandish, but it was just going in all kinds of directions, these theories on TikTok, social media, Twitter, and it's just, it was never ending. And, you know, I'm not spoiling the show, but it did not end the way everybody anticipated it did not feature characters that people anticipated and while i loved wandavision i've rewatched wandavision a bunch of times now but it gets a lot of hate because it didn't include these things they apparently teased or hinted at which if you read the comics okay you could you could of course speculate that it's going in that direction but just the reaction that people had when this wasn't the direction they went into it's just like well come on i mean it was still good like just because they didn't include like mephisto as the villain or they didn't inc introduce like the x-men or the fantastic four or Re reed richards in particular like, that doesn't mean it was bad. Like, I don't get it. That, to me, is just kind of weird. Like, even looking back now, I felt like, um, wow, that is, that's a lot to include in just the... Uh, I think WandaVision was, like, nine episodes. In, the, like, a nine-episode miniseries, it would have been too much too fast. And considering um, the way Loki ended and what that set up, it just would not have lined up properly i feel like i feel like as these shows go along they need to kind of 
build off one another in terms of the anticipation of the next uh, threat in the MCU. You know, the same buildup they had in the first phases, the first couple of phases, you know, that led into the first Avengers movie, the first, you know, big team up, and um, which inevitably just leads up to the events of Infinity War and Endgame, just, you know, this whole buildup over a long period of time. Which I don't know, I really don't know how Marvel is going to do it this time around. How quickly they're going to set it up and establish new characters on top of the you know main villain. And all. it's so much to get into. But if we can expect anything, it's that Marvel is going to absolutely crush it with whatever the end result of these next couple of phases with the shows and the movies and... The story's told. Whatever that end result is, it's going to be a good one. No doubt. Come on. Have faith, people. And have fun with it. You know, it's nice to speculate. It's fun to have theories and whatnot. But holy shit, can it be very... It'd be very explosive. Fans attacking each other on the social media comment sections and stuff like that. Especially on TikTok. Holy shit. TikTok. Y'all are fucking wild on TikTok. People don't give a fuck on TikTok. They say anything and everything. They they say that one thing that, you know, is going to get you upset. So I spent money the other week, right? <laughs> what, a, what a way to introduce that. But um, I spent money the other week on some blue light glasses and fucking overpriced glasses, let me tell you. Let me just move this closer. All right. Yeah. So I got some blue light glasses for... I don't, I'm not even going to say how much because I'm, I'm embarrassed about it. I, I regret it, but like they look fucking good. So if you see me in glasses, that's what they are. Blue light glasses to help with like my vision because I look at screens all day and it just protects you from the blue light from... I, I don't know. There's a science behind it, according to my sister. But these look good as fuck. But holy crap. I could have gone way cheaper. It's just one of those out of control. Um, it's just part of my out of control spending, you know, being home more and just, you know, being aware of like all the cool shit that comes out. Like uh, I for anybody that knows me knows I fucking love Funko Pop figures. And since May of last year, that collection has grown significantly. Just. I've set the tweet notifications for like uh one so I know when particular ones come out and it is it's bad. I'm running out of space. I have currently about 30 pre-orders that are set to ship within the next, you know, 3-4 months. Just different releases, different uh different things. And so I'm on top of that, I've been buying some that are in stock. Just ones that I've uh, stumbled upon that I'm like, oh shit, wait, I don't have this. And sometimes it'll be when I'm just buying um, other shit, like actual essentials. Like the other day I bought, like on Amazon, thank God for Amazon Prime, it just arrives just like that. And I ordered some packing tape to ship stuff. I think I ordered some sponges, you know, household stuff to have. And then in my cart... I add the Hocus Pocus figures, the Sanderson sisters, and I also have, I also added the two-pack uh, Spider-Man of the 60s Spider-Man where they're like pointing at each other. And so I got that. It arrived this morning. I was looking at it before uh, I started recording this episode. But overall, I just have very little self-control when it comes to buying pop figures. It's It's bad. It's very, God, I wish I could write them off on my taxes. And God help the woman I end up with, because holy shit, that's going to be, that's going to be something. Where to put them? Oh, why are you buying so much? And I don't know, maybe I'll slow down in the future. Who knows? But like, I, I got to slow down now. I have no fucking space right now. I bought over the summer, not over the summer, over the winter. It's summer now. Um, over the winter, I bought this giant, like, industrial-looking storage 
shelf. And it's like one you put in the garage. I put it in my basement and they're just all in their boxes stacked up. And like they look good for a time. There was still like a lot of space. I had a whole bottom shelf free. But now it's all adding up. And I got to figure out where I'm going to put these 30 pre-orders, which includes, I think, three Jumbo Pops. One of them is uh, the Halloween Michael Myers 10-inch that comes out. I don't know when that comes out, but it's one. Of, that was the first one I ordered, I remember. And then the Blacklight Galactus with Silver Surfer. That was dope. I love the Blacklight series. It's just incredible. And then the final one that I got, the most recent one, is a black suited, black and gold suit Spider-Man from Spider-Man No Way Home. Which, that's crazy how we get the pop figures before we get the fucking trailer. What What's that about? Like, come on. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know if you guys hear those birds in the background. There's birds outside, and they're kind of chirping. And yeah, I really need a solid, like podcasting space because this is not it i'm doing this for my kitchen counter where it's like semi-quiet compared to like the rest of the house but this is uh i need i need somewhere better way better but back to the pop figures so yeah i pre-ordered those and actually let me see do i have my list in front of me it's so many that i have to have i have a google doc with uh google doc did i say google doc <laughs> I have a Google Doc, and it has all my pending pop orders. So, and I've broken them down into, not a category, but by the store. And I have a section for the ones that have shipped slash are out for delivery. And so, shipped slash out for delivery, as of now, I have a 1939 Batman first appearance that I got from Entertainment Earth. Got a bunch from Entertainment Earth that I've uh, pre-ordered. Let's see. Let me read out these Entertainment Earth ones. Elvira, 40th Anniversary. Vincent Price. A Dia de los DC Bane. Um, Oscar. I forget which one that is from The Office. Kevin as the Dunder Mifflin superhero. Pumpkinhead Dwight. Sylvie from Loki. Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day, and John Lennon of The Beatles. Those are some cool ones. I like those a lot. I got recently the first of my... The first of the Marvel What If Pops, and I got Captain Carter in the mail. I'm still waiting for some others that I ordered off that line. I forget which ones, but Captain Carter looks fucking amazing. That's probably one of my favorite newer ones. Probably my favorite in that uh, series. I recently pre-ordered um, Walmart exclusive Thor from What If. And let me see. I got a whole bunch from the What If series. That's going to be a dope show. I don't even care if it's like if it's just animated. Like it would have been cool to see uh, a live action series like that. But I'll, I'll take it. I will take it. I'm going to watch the fuck out of that show. Got a bunch of interesting ones here. Let's see. Oh, I finally got my hands on... Well, not I didn't get my hands on it just yet, but... The Winter Soldier with S.H.I.E.L.D. It's the Year of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Amazon exclusive. I think it's an Amazon ex exclusive. Finally got the order in, but I don't know when I'm ever going to get it. It's literally just... If I go into my Amazon now... Do -do 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 -do. It says order received. We will email you when we have an estimated delivery date. I could get this like fucking five years from now, but I don't even care. The order's in. And for all you pop collectors out there, if you've seen the or have the Year of the Shield Winter Soldier with the Shield, oh, it is an Amazon exclusive. If you guys have this figure, you know how fucking sick that looks. And if you know anybody that knows me knows I love. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. That's like one of my favorite MCU movies. Pop in a Box exclusive, Wanda Maximoff from Avengers Endgame. That's a dope one. That shipped, actually. I should update that. Got a bunch of Mandalorian pops. 
Blacklight Batman from Hot Topic that I'm not going to get till like fucking December. Yeah, a lot of cool shit. Some Loki pops. I'm really, I have not seen, the one pop that I want is classic Loki from the series. And I think that's a box lunch exclusive and I have not seen or heard about it since they announced it. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but hopefully I get my hands on that soon. That's really the only one I care about. I'm not too, you know, alligator Loki is kind of cool though. I got to refrain. I got to like make priorities when it comes to this collection now, since I'm, you know, very limited on space. I'm going to have to buy a house. The only reason I want a house is just so I could have enough space to store all my shit. Like pop figures aside, I have so many different toys and just collectibles that do not fit in my current living situation. And like I have um, Thor's axe, Stormbreaker. It's a giant heavy ass Stormbreaker from Endgame. And it's just sitting in my room in a corner because there's just no space for it. And I've had to start... Um, it's not like I could even hang it from the walls, which uh, that's something I started doing. I started putting stuff up on the walls. I got a... Where did I get this from? I think it was Big Bad Toy Store. Big Bad Toy Store was selling the Mandalorian helmet. And me with no place to put it. I remember I pre-ordered this like at midnight on on Christmas Eve. And so I finally got it in May. And with no place to put it at all, like there's no shelf or anything, I bought on Amazon a, um, it's like a rack that you mount to the wall. And like, it, I think on Amazon, they listed it as a motorcycle helmet rack. And so I bought that and I put it up on my wall. And let me tell you, it looks fucking amazing, but I'm just like, wow, the lengths that I'm going to, to have stuff in my room, it's just fucking incredible. Incredible given, you know, the size of my bedroom. It's just, it's like Harry Potter's room under the stairs is bigger than my room. It's, it's bad, but bit of an exaggeration, but you know, just to emphasize how limited my space is. And then I have some basement space. That's about it. I don't know. We'll see what happens in the future. Hopefully I can, I don't have to slow down my collection much. But I think I am going to have to turn off uh, tweet notifications for these pop accounts. Because I, I know when I see one I like, I'm going to have to buy it. My friend Mike actually gave me the idea to do an episode solely about pop figures. And just like how I started and where I'm at in the collection. My whole process in uh, keeping track with them. So maybe I'll do that in the future. Sometime soon, hopefully. I gotta start writing these ideas down because there's a bunch of shit I want to do, which if you listen to the last episode, you know I want to do um, the Down the Rabbit Hole series, which is I go into different conspiracy theories. I remember the word. I don't know why I couldn't remember, you know, conspiracy theories. That's literally what the fuck they're called, and I forgot what it was. But I want to do that. I want to do the Halloween episodes. I mentioned the sad summer recap episodes, just different special kind of episodes for different things that are going on. But yeah, a pop um a pop episode would be a fun one. It would be a long one too. I would want to cover each and every not every single pop, but I want to cover each and every aspect of it of like collecting and just uh the kinds of collectors there are and stuff like that. So hopefully I could get that out soon. And speaking of Mike, he just liked my photo on the simply um Instagram which y'all should go follow. That's at simply existing pod and on Twitter underscore simply existing. The Twitter's fucking dead, bro. Holy shit. Like, I don't know. Whatever. Go follow everywhere on TikTok. Simply existing pod. Tell all your friends. This is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to like, follow, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And until next week, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Wherever you are in the world, whenever you're listening to this, thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye.